One of my favorite phrases as a paid media marketer is free tool. And we have a great one for you today. It is Microsoft Clarity. This is a free heat mapping tool that you can add to any of your landing pages or websites. Then you can look at how users are interacting with certain elements of your website. This can give you great information and data on maybe things that you would want to change to improve the user experience. This tool is GDPR and CCPA compliant. So there's certain things that you really don't have to worry about and other elements that you can block out to make sure that it's okay that you're recording this information. There's a lot of that this tool can offer. Pretty much I wanna say that I'm not gonna be able to go over everything that I can do in this tool, but we will show you how you can set it up and give you a really high level overview of certain elements that are important to you and things that you will wanna know that I can pretty much guarantee will make you want to use Microsoft Clarity. To even begin using Microsoft Clarity, we need to make sure it's installed on your website. I have the URL on the screen right now. It is clarity.microsoft.com. And you don't need to pause the video. I'm gonna put it in the video description so you can always access it. If you're brand new to this tool, you'll probably need to go up and sign up. There's also one right here currently, but I'm sure they're gonna change the homepage at some point. For me, I already have clients who are using the tool. So I can go and sign in. We get a variety of ways that make it easy. Google, Facebook, Microsoft. Since it is a Microsoft product, for some reason, I've always just used the Microsoft login. And this could be something if you have Skype, Teams, your Microsoft ads, Xbox account, whatever. Most likely you do have a Microsoft account already. All right, so here's the sign in portal. I'm going to fill in the information I need to get to the next spot. So let me get this done and we'll jump ahead a bit. All right, in our account, we already have a couple other projects created. One is for our own site, one is for another client site. But I want to set up a new project for another client. So you can see the blue button right here for add new project. And going down right here. You can call the project whatever you want. In this case, I'm going to add the client name and then go down and paste the client website. And then you can choose a site category. This particular client is SaaS. You see, we don't get too many other options here, but it's really not that important. So again, I put the client's name under the name field. There's their website and SaaS. If you have different subdomains or you're just one company and a family of other sister companies under an umbrella company, you can probably see how you can create multiple projects for each potentially different division, that whole sort of thing. But we're using it more from like the agency perspective where each project is a client. There's no right or wrong, just do what's better for you in your situation. So let's add a new project. And here they give us many ways where we can install the Clarity tracking code. We see a variety of website platforms or Shopify, Squarespace, Weebly, Wix, WordPress. We got landing page tools like Unbounce, we will be going through the Google Tag Manager way. That's just the way I'm used to. But you see if we scroll down a little bit, there's options to manually add the tracking code. And if you do that, they give you directions that it needs to go into the head element of the site. If you go down even further, you can connect the project to Google Analytics. But for now, I just want to get the clarity code on the site. So I'm going to go back up and click on Google Tag Manager. And then I'll click on Connect Now to get into my account. I skipped one little step where I had to do another login to allow Microsoft to have access to the Tag Manager account. Since Michelle and I do work on a variety of accounts, we have access to several GTM accounts. So I'm just going to choose the account that we're going to use to set this up. Choose the proper container. This one's easy. It only has one web container. Both are the client name, so I had to blur that out. And then we can go down and create and publish. You see, I did not even have to go into Google Tag Manager, create a different custom tag and all that stuff. We did it all through the Clarity platform. It is extremely easy. This is the only way I've done it, so I can't speak for all the other options, but I'm going to assume it's fairly easy as well. So now we can go and integrate with Google Analytics. Just like when I started to sync Tag Manager, there were a few extra permissions I had to approve to even get to this step. I had to skip those parts because the whole screen would have been blurred out. But then I just need to connect to the proper Google Analytics account. We found our website, so now I can click Save. And now we're connected to Google Analytics. If I go down to Advanced Settings, and the only option is going to be how cookies would work when using the Clarity tool. But next I want to talk about some of the menu options off to the left here. First, there's the Overview. If you want to update the name of your project, you can see the website URL is grayed out. So we've already saved this project. We can't change the website URL. We would have to create a new one if the URL changes. But you also see the overview is where you can delete this project if it's no longer relevant or you just don't want to use it anymore. Under overview, there's team. Pretty straightforward. You can invite whoever you want. If we want to add a new team member, I'm not going to enter in another email address. So you don't need to see it, but you can make that person a member or an admin. And you can see the roles are admin or member. Both admins and members 
can view heat maps, view the recordings, share the heat maps in the recordings, and a member can also delete heat maps and recordings. So what a member can't do is mostly from the admin side, hence the name. So a member cannot add new team members or remove team members. Just a member role cannot adjust settings as well as anything related to the main project settings. So I think it's important to know that team members can still delete heat maps. They just cannot delete the project. Next is setup. For whatever reason, if you want to change how you have it set up, it's pretty much exactly where we were. Then I'll go to masking. This is an important part that you should look at and understand. With a heat map tool that is recording what is on the screen, potentially sensitive information can be recorded. So the default option is balanced. So Microsoft is going to only block out what they consider sensitive text. Think about form fields, users inputting their information. You could switch it to strict, and that would be all text that would be visible on the screen would get masked. Or maybe this is just a dev site. You're just user testing to see how people will go within the page. It doesn't matter about the content. No one's going to be submitting in any information. You may want to go to relaxed, which is no text is masked. I'm going to leave it as balanced. But then you can look at add element. So you would have to add in the CSS selector of which element of a page that you would want masked. And you would have to do this for each individual element that you need to have kind of blocked out. So if there's a ton of different elements you want blocked out, have fun with that. You got to do it one at a time. And then we have IP blocking, pretty straightforward. Just like you don't want to have your own team members searching for your own keywords, you probably don't really care or want to review how your team members are viewing your own website. So you can just name your IP, decide to block out your current IP. And when I clicked on it, it pulled my IP address. So I'm blurring that one out. But then work with your team to find all your company's IP addresses, or you see we can use a range, add them in here. And this is just one of the ways to try to get as much information as possible from people who aren't working for your company. I'm gonna cancel out of this because I don't care. And then we can go up to the dashboard and we don't see anything. And you could see down here, it says it could take up to two hours for results to be recorded. So while I just set this up for a new client, I'm actually gonna hop into the one that we created for the Paid Media Pros website, just so you can get an understanding of what the recordings and heat maps can look like. And here we are with just one example of what your dashboard could look like. We can see the date range is just the past three days. Look at total sessions, distinct or unique users, we see pages per session, average scroll depth, average time on site, split between active and inactive, we get visibility for dead clicks. That's just people clicking on the page and it doesn't do anything. I like to call those random clicks. We have zero rage clicks. I love that they just call it rage clicks. That's amazing. You know what that is. If a certain link isn't working, people get upset and they're like, ah, you know, you can probably hear me clicking in the background. Those are rage clicks. Quick backs, people maybe accidentally clicked on a link and they're like, oh, wrong page. And they quickly go back to the other page. We see popular pages. By default, URL parameters are turned off. I know I've hopped around a little bit, but there's already other additional elements within the stats that we're looking at. Pretty much all of them will have the option to download the information. Rage Clicks doesn't have any because there's none recorded. But if I scroll down a little bit more, we see where there's options, where there's data recorded, we can check out the recordings. So if I want to see why am I getting these dead clicks, I can highlight over recording and then just look at the recordings that have the dead click stats. I can click and look at the recordings of where people went and had quickbacks. So here's all the recordings. You see it's filtered by the quickbacks. If I click on this specific one, this is getting your first glimpse of the recording. You can actually see what people were doing when they visited the website. I'm gonna hop back real quick. We'll, we'll go into other recordings. But there we see so much more information. The browser, the operating system, the device, the country the users are coming from, plenty of other things. But I still see I'm in the quickbacks filter, so I'm gonna X out of that. We said that it's just the past three days, and that's fine but you can adjust your filters in a ton of different ways. Here's the time frame. there's the country, there's devices, the browser, the operating system, and here is a variety of different traffic, session, page, insights. This is definitely gonna be helpful if you get a ton of information stored in here and you really wanna filter by specific recordings, potentially the type of user, page duration. You know, For the people who are jumping off quick, why are they doing it? A lot of different ways. I'm gonna cancel out of this though. I'm going to hop back into filters just because I realized I wanted to show you something. Let's say I only want to look at PC. I can apply it. And then if I really like this view or I just want to create a different view for each device type, I can go and click save as a segment. I'm going to save a new one, give it a simple name, click save. So now we see the segment name changed to PC because that is the segment I am in. If I click down, it's showing us the one that we're currently in. But you can adjust your filters. Make your dashboard view the way that you want it. You'll be able to save that as a segment. Right now it's showing the clear one because I'm currently in a certain segment. And then you can have several different views 
of what may be important to you. It's pretty much like creating your own custom dashboard, but they call them segments. All right, let's go into some recordings. You can see there are several ways that you could sort your recordings. Right now I have it on new to old, but you may want to look at the duration, which recordings have the most clicks, which recordings have the most page views. So this user was digging through our blog, was on the site for 42 minutes, went to eight pages, clicked six times, they're from the United States, and they're on a Windows PC. That's a good amount of information. And when was this? Yesterday. Okay. All I have to do is click anywhere within this box. Might take a little bit to load. And there you can literally watch the video of how someone is interacting with the website. We see typical video features. You can go back 10 seconds, ahead 30 seconds. We can pause. You can change the speed on how you're watching the video. And currently the skip inactivity button is going to be checked. So if I go up to this little circle element right here, it's letting me know this is where a user left the site for five minutes. And I had to go ahead and pause it. Otherwise it's going to keep going. I'm talking. It's going to distract me, but you can uncheck this box. If you actually want to watch when people are being idle and nothing's going on, you can do that if you want to, but I'd rather skip it because we still get indication on where the user was inactive just based on these symbols. If we go up top, we have more details. Next, we get a little bit deeper session information. I went up and hit click. So this is going to show me the click heat map. As you can see, there's a little bit of a heat map here. And as I'm scrolling down on the page, we're not seeing anything else really because it is a long blog page, not expecting too many people to click on this. Next is going to be your scroll map. Just like if you've set up a scroll depth trigger in Google Tag Manager to record within Google Analytics, this is kind of similar to that. The percentage of the page that the user scrolled down. And here we can see for this particular page, people aren't making it down to 100%. So we get to see on this specific URL, what percentage of users are actually reaching to this specific point. It's a lot easier to see this way than random events and actions and labels that are recorded within Google Analytics. If I go up to area, it's gonna block it out as more of an area map. So you can see this is blocked off where this is getting a third of the clicks and that's one way of doing it. I'm gonna go back. I think some of this stuff actually might look better on a dashboard and then I can choose a specific page. All right, so now I just chose the home page. And if I go up to the recordings, we can see interactions for just the home page. So here's another example. And this is where I'm assuming we're going to have most of the clicks and interactions just because we have a bunch of videos embedded on the home page. Yep, scroll down, looking at the video. Then they went to the blog. Now they're scrolling down on the blog. Now they're looking at the see us speak page and they're bouncing around, checking out the site. Pause that one again, because it's going to get distracting. If I don't care about the recordings and I just want to see heat maps, this is another area we can look at. And you can see this view is different. Within a heat map, we're looking at the PC view right now, but you can switch it up to tablet and mobile if you want to. If we scroll over to click, it's looking at all clicks right now, but then you can change to dead clicks. If I go back up, I'm not going to click rage clicks because we saw on the dashboard we didn't have any first clicks. And then the last one was last clicks. I'm going to leave it as all. From the scroll option, similar to what we saw in the recording, looking at this specific page, seeing where people are dropping off. While we're doing this specific view, notice the coloring at the bottom. Which pages are the most popular, going from red to hot, blue to cold. So as we go back up, it makes sense. It keeps getting closer to red, just because at the top, this is about 100% users are going to reach if they land on this page, because our navigation is going to show automatically no matter what device you're on. It makes perfect sense. And then looking at the view from area, just to confirm, your area heat map is showing the percentage of clicks the element of the page gets. So that's why I see it's broken down. There's certain elements here. This one's a little bit higher. This is where we have pretty much our main top navigation. So there's going to be clicks here. You have a few other links over here. So this whole top banner, they're counting as one. And as we scroll down, since these are embedded YouTube videos, we cannot track the clicks on those, which is unfortunate because we know we get a decent amount of clicks from these videos. There's another link here, a few links on the bottom that whole sort of thing. With the area map, you can go over and compare. So for whatever reason, if I wanted to compare the home page with our about page, let's scroll back to the top on the left, wait for that one to load. And now we can look at the different numbers in between. So hopefully you're already seeing how useful this could be if you are doing any landing page testing. I know these two pages really aren't comparable and I also have completely different date ranges, but you get it in terms of at least the functionality of what you can do. So if you're seeing on a page that you're testing, that people are paying attention to the most important parts of the page. They're actually clicking on the most important links or element on the page with a certain variant. You might get more insights on where users' eyeballs are going and how your page layout or design is affecting the user behavior. So then you can take those learnings, make your changes, implement whatever you want to, and hopefully continue to improve the landing page experience and hopefully your conversion rates. I'm going to X out of this one and go back to recordings. 
And then I'll show you a few other different features to close out the video. If there's any particular recording that you like, I'm just gonna click on this one randomly, pause it so it stops moving. All right, let me say that again. If there's any particular recording that you like or want to save to review later, go over to the star and you can favorite that session. Then when you're at the top, on that particular page or however you have it filtered, if you click on favorite recordings, the ones that you have saved will show up here. Another thing that you can do is add labels to your videos and you get up to a thousand labels per project within Microsoft Clarity. So to do that, you can go to more details. You'll see labels. You can add a new one. There's some examples of what you may want to use. I'm just making one up. Maybe you want to label all the videos of people who actually went down to the bottom of your page. And now we've added it to this recording. So if I go back up, say I'm just Xing out of a bunch of different things. Let's say I'm in an all recordings. I have a ton of different videos recorded. I can go to filters. And then once I'm in filters, you can scroll to the bottom. There you'll see custom labels. And there's the new label that I just created. So if I click on that one, apply it. And I only did it for the one video, so there it is. Label filtering will be there at the dashboard recording or heat map level. And then you can save label filters as your own segment to go back and review later. There is a lot here. I completely understand that. And there's a ton that you can do. And I know I've missed certain features. Maybe we can do another video later. For a free tool, Clarity has a lot and it is so easy to set up. But before I leave, I do wanna show you one thing. I'm gonna hop into a different browser. I use Google Chrome and I love my Chrome extensions. And one that is tied in to Microsoft Clarity is their official extension of Microsoft Clarity Live. So I'm gonna add it to my browser. Okay, it's added to my browser. I'm gonna hop back to the Paid Media Pros website. And I know I have my main browser row with all my extensions not included within this video. This triangle is gonna be the logo that'll appear where your extensions are. All right, so let's go into Paid Media Pros. All right, I'm on the Paid Media Pros homepage. I'm gonna click on the Clarity Live extension. Okay, there it's saying to show the Clarity widget and we'll see it soon. But if you click on see more recordings or see more heat maps, it's just going to take you to the main Clarity website where we were just looking at. If I click out of the box, there we see up above, there's the Clarity widget. So I'm actually going to bring it down towards the middle. Because a lot of times if you go out at the top, we have a top navigation, then the widget gets buried under the click elements and I can't close out of it. But here we see the first button is your heat maps. If we go down below, we're still looking at the past three days. And now we're seeing live on the website where the heat map is. You might prefer this view because it's gonna be bigger on your screen. So I can see there's a few clicks over here. There's a few element clicks over there. Information on where the average fold is, is right here. There's our cookie link down there. That's getting a couple hits. And again, once we get to the embedded YouTube videos, they're not gonna be able to record those. Letting us know 75 users have reached to this point. And then you can keep going to the bottom. I'm gonna bring this sucker down again. I'm gonna click on the area map. And then we're getting the percentages of where users clicked on this particular page. Again, within the past three days, if you can see the widget that's on the bottom. Scroll back to the top. The area heat map one was kind of freezing up on me a little bit. So you may run into some issues. It could be glitchy. But what you should be able to do, is what I am getting within the heat map one, can go down, change the date range, and it'll change the stats a little bit, as well as what you're seeing on the page. If I go to recordings, right within the extension, they're showing me the list of recordings from the page that we're on, all within the Clarity Live extension. And if you wanna see more, then they send us right back to the main project page, filtered in by the page that we were on. I know I said it already, but there's a lot more I could have shown you, and we could really go down some rabbit holes. But set it up yourself, it is so easy to do, and explore, and see how people are engaging with your website. For a free tool, Microsoft Clarity has a lot to offer and our clients love it because it's something free that we can show them and it gives them more insights on how to improve the experience. I have no problem admitting I'm still fairly new to how this tool works. I'm still getting into the ins and outs of everything. But if you have any questions on what you can or cannot do within Microsoft Clarity, please leave a question below and we'll try to answer it as best as possible. Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week. So if you want to see more from the Paid Media Pros channel, be sure to subscribe.